What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 561 of the Talking Fires podcast and YouTube show. Ben Fadden here. It is February 2nd, 2024. Hopefully everybody is doing well. Kevin AC, he just put out a Q&A with Mike Schilt, Padres manager, and it discussed a lot of different topics and kind of gave some updates on some key players on this Padres team. So that's what I want to get into. If you want to join the show, you can click that link that is at the top of the chat. If you have any comments, questions, feel free to put that in the live chat and I will get to that. You can support the channel, use that super chat button, you jump to the front of the line. So I appreciate all of the support there. Let's get to it here, just right out of the gate. From the UT, earlier this week, if you missed it, I had Ryan, Ryan Finley on, the sports editor for the UT. You can go catch that after this show is done. I want to start off with the health of you, Darvish and Joe Musgrove. Schilt says that they're ramping up full gear, ready to go, no limitations. Bullpens are good. They mixed in a few hitters recently. They're recovering well, so they're ready, healthy. Great. That's great news because these two guys obviously are important pieces to this Padres rotation. Musgrove and Darvish and then what, right? Michael King has like less than 20 career starts, I think, in the big leagues. I know he started at Boston College, but not of a lot of experience. And then you don't know what Pedro Avila is going to give you. Matt Waldron, Randy Vasquez, Johnny Brito. Like these, these two guys need to perform like top of the rotation guys this year if the Padres want to go deep into the postseason, if they want to make the postseason. Uh, because there's question marks, you know, like these are the two guys that are on those long term contracts in this rotation. They're not just paid to to be names, right? They're paid to show up and pitch um, and pitch well, not just provide innings, which is important, but to provide impactful innings. And Joe, I want to reiterate this about Joe. He pitched really well for the most part in 2023. We just remember the injuries and he didn't perform. Um, he was not on the field to perform, I should say late in the year because of that injury. So really, that's the question marks. But all things are good right now with Darvish and Musgrove. Obviously, we will see what happens as we get into the season, as we get into spring training, because that's obviously what matters the most. It's one thing to be healthy throwing at San Diego State like they I saw they were doing the other day. Come, uh, and it's another thing to be you know healthy throughout the season. So I know... If there's two guys that you want to be paying long-term contracts to in terms of commitment and care, it's those two guys. I'm definitely not questioning that. We know that Musgrove cares a lot about winning for this city. We know that Darvish cares a lot uh, about his preparation and about winning and living up to that contract. So we'll see. But I'm hoping for sure for, for bounce back years in terms of like staying healthy, production for Darvish, but like staying healthy for, for both of them. Um, so that's one of the topics that was in this Q&A. And then Michael King and what's this rotation going to look like? Who's going to be fighting for some rotation spots? Uh, Mike Schilt got into that. And right now, I mean, the rotation is Darvish, Musgrove, King. And then after that, there's guys fighting for it. We would think that the Padres will acquire one more starting pitcher, whether that's Michael Lorenzen or Alec Manoa. Manoa would be via trade, whether that's Shane Bieber via trade. Corbin Burns, obviously, was traded to the Baltimore Orioles from the Milwaukee Brewers yesterday. And I gave my thoughts a little bit on that. And maybe the Padres should make a run at Shane Bieber if, we, if we're comparing maybe a lesser offer that would get that done with the Guardians. Because look at what the, the Orioles had to give up for Corbin Burns. It wasn't that much, in my opinion. And the Padres could have gotten that done if they would have been able to go more than what the Orioles gave. So I feel like they can get Shane Bieber. It's just a matter of what do the Guardians want? Are the Padres willing to give up what the Guardians want, right? Maybe they go the starting pitching route in free agency if, the, if you know, they're waiting and some, some guy is willing to come for a, you know, not $14 million a year contract. So we'll see. But right now, all, all Mike Schilt can do is talk about the guys that are on this roster. And so he's talking about Darvish, Musgrove, really impressed by those guys more and more every time I see them and talk to them. You couldn't ask for two better guys at the top of your rotation. So it starts with them, and then there's open spots with a lot of great candidates. You start with Michael King. He's made 19 career starts. He has pitched in the bullpen in the past, but has started all the way back 
at Boston College and has done a nice job in his starts. He's coming in as a starter for us, and we're excited about him. His reputation of being a real pro, having a high care factor, good work ethic, all the positive intangibles you want are true in spades. This guy is really uh, a together guy, so he's clearly going to get the opportunity. Yeah, I mean, Michael King, he was the big guy. I mean, Drew Thorpe is significant as well in this Juan Soto deal, but Michael King was the big name that I think got that focus. I mean, the Yankees were focused on not putting Michael King in this trade package. Aaron Boone was talking about that on Talking Yanks um, earlier this week. How they, they spent some days trying to figure out if they could not include Michael King in that deal. So if he can stay healthy, he's had a little bit of trouble with that in the past with the Yankees. If he can stay healthy, you would think it's going to be a pretty solid starter that the Padres picked up that is under control for the next couple of years, 24 and 25. It's still that question, though. I'm hoping it turns out like Seth Lugo, where we were kind of questioning it last year, right? I know I was going into the year and during spring training. Like, it was one thing that you were pitching well in spring training, but what you were, what were you going to do during the season? And Seth Lugo pitched well for this Padres team in 2023. I'm hoping that's the same thing with Michael King, but right now it's hope because we we can't prove that because it's February 2nd right now. Schilt continues, says, Brito, Vasquez, they're coming into camp as starters. Then you've got Avila, Waldron. It's an open competition. So you've got Yara Ariarte, who is having a great offseason. Jay Groom, Glenn Otto has really opened some eyes. Padres picked him up, I believe, this offseason. It's going to be a very healthy camp for a competition. And really, it's because that's the Padres' only option with this rotation. With the three guys that I named, and then the 4-5, it's up in the air. And you want more depth after that. I don't think Padres fans would be super confident right now in a rotation of Darvish, Musgrove, King, Vasquez, Brito, or Vasquez, Avila, Brito, Avila, whatever. I think you want one more starter because guys get hurt. And so they're going to need depth. And we don't know what these guys are going to end up doing um, when they get these starting opportunities. I'm not going to act like I know a ton about Randy Vasquez and Johnny Brito. I don't. I haven't seen that. I've read things but I have not seen them pitch day in, not day in, day out, because you don't pitch every day, but you get what I'm saying. Like every time through the rotation, we haven't seen that. So really, I'm going to be interested in seeing how those guys pitch in spring training. And yeah, maybe I'm going to be weighing what they do too much in spring training because this is the, this is the first time that I've watched those guys starts every pitch um, in a Padres uniform, obviously. So yeah, yeah. Um, these spring trainings are going to be big, obviously, because sure, I think teams try to look at the big picture on if you know guys are fighting for a rotation spot, you try to look at everything. But sometimes when you don't have a, a firm rotation, how are you pitching at spring training? How are you pitching right now? I think that's going to weigh, obviously, on their decision. So these are big springs for all these guys. I don't think Jay Groom has the edge here. I would say Vasquez and Brito do. Um, over someone like Jay Groom and Glenn Otto and probably Iriarte. Probably, I think the Padres probably wouldn't want to have Iriarte start right out of big league camp, going right at the beginning of the year. Um, but maybe he surprises some people. But yeah, Brito, Vasquez, Waldron, Avila, I think those are the main guys right now. I, I, I don't know. Schilt did not answer this. What are they going to do with Luis Patino? Is he going to go into camp as a starting pitcher? How much of an opportunity is he going to get? We didn't get that. Haven't really gotten a firm answer on that yet, but I'm sure that will be asked when spring training starts for pitchers and catchers on February 11th. Um, and then, you know, Mike Schild obviously talks to the media pretty much every day, morning, and then after spring training games, I think most of the time. So we'll see what happens there. Kevin asked about who is the Padres closer, and Schilt pretty much said, yeah, we don't have a firm answer on that. And and sometimes the the best bullpens this is i'm not quoting him but this is just pretty much what he said pretty much best bullpen is when you can have multiple guys that can fill those roles because that means that there is depth and you know there's there's multiple guys that you can go to you're not going to be able to go to your closer day in day out so it's good to so when you know suarez let's say if he gets the closer spot he gets a day off you can bring yuki matsui and have him pitch you can bring Enel de los santos and have him pitch or tom cosgrove steven wilson um you will suck go uh, Wandy Peralta, you know, there's a lot of different names that you could go to 
in those high leverage spots. That's what we hope. But we'll see what happens in spring training with these guys that are coming over from Japan, from Korea. What's going to happen? How are they going to adjust? I think they pitch with different balls overseas. So, like, how are they going to adjust to that? When they get into big league actual season action, how are they going to do? And I don't think that Schilt's going to, like, judge these guys off of their first appearance. Remember Robert Suarez, his first appearance, didn't he give up that walk-off to Seth Beer um, to start the 22 season in Arizona? Oh, he's not built for that. Well, look what happened later in the year. You know, he's pitching huge innings in the postseason. So it's going to take time, I think, to really judge, okay, where is this bullpen at? Where do these guys slot in? Seven, eight, nine. There's a lot of arms. So I, I'm not so sure that they are going to slot in seven, eight, nine at the beginning of the year. It's going to take time to to build out roles if that's the way that Mike Schilt decides to go about things. Um, he was asked about, Expectations for Manny Machado physically going into spring training. Schultz says he has had a great offseason. Victor Rodriguez just went down to Miami, Padres hitting coach, obviously, and saw him. Our medical staff and assistant hitting coach Mike McCoy have seen him in San Diego. Manny is killing his offseason. Schilt loves to use that, that, that word, killing, killing the offseason with a lot of guys. He's been able to swing. I can tell you he's on pace to be able to be ready offensively, and he's in a really good spot and recovering well with his throwing, but we also know that we don't feel like we have to validate him going out there at third base, the early part of spring, the first exhibition game. He's in a good spot to be ready for the start of the season. So that's good. And ready for third base, Mike Schilt said, Mike Schilt said he has the opportunity. That's the key word. He has an opportunity to start the season at third base. He's on target to be able to get some opportunities to play in spring training at third base but I'm not going to put any time frame on it. And why would you if you're Mike Schilt? You're not going to put a time frame on it. I would not expect Manny Machado to go play third base in the first exhibition game. It's a long season. If he doesn't start the season at third base, I don't think that's the biggest deal. I want this guy to be healthy long term. I don't need the Padres rushing Manny Machado. I don't need Manny rushing himself. I got to get back for opening day, March 20th in, in Korea to play third base. I don't need that. What, what's most important, Manny is great at third base, but what is most important is his health for the entire 2024 season and his bat in the lineup. Like, that's the most important thing to me. So if he DHs at the start, fine. There was that video that came out from Manny's trainer, who's been on the show a couple of times, of him uh, lifting pretty heavy, it seemed like, um, deadlifting there in Miami. So it seems like everything's good there. Uh, I've seen some fans on social media say that he has been throwing at Petco Park, or at least they saw him do that. Maybe they live near Petco Park and they could see it. Um, if that's true, great. Um, I, I'm not expecting Manny to be, you know, making throws from deep in the third base, down the down the third baseline or in the 5-5 five, five hole day one of spring training, nor would I actually want him to do that. Like, I'm okay with the Padres taking it slow with Manny and if Manny wants to go fast with it, the Padres slowing Manny down because it is a long season. And I'm sure as a player, he's probably like, yeah, I want to go. I want to do this because that's the competitor in you. But he knows it's a long season and he knows that the Padres need him in that lineup. So hopefully they take it slow and things are good there with Manny. Seems like healthy. Things are going as planned. He is healthy. Things are going as planned with Manny. Um, Xander Bogart's position. Schilt says that's a good question. Right now he's playing shortstop. And I see that and I say, hmm, right now he's playing shortstop. So, I mean, are they opening the door to him playing first or him playing second? I, I think he's going to be the shortstop, but it is interesting that he said right now he's playing shortstop. AC asked, have you talked to him about a move to the right side of the infield? Not in earnest. Schilt says, we're going to spend some time together soon. He did a nice job at shortstop. Obviously, Kim won a gold glove. As a utility player, he can play shortstop. The great news is there are options there. So does that mean if like Bogarts is not hitting, then that they will just have Bogarts DH to focus more on hitting? Or... Would they move Bogarts to second and have Kim play short? I, I don't know. 
right now, I think Bogarts is the shortstop. I don't want to go too deep into that position discussion right now because right now, I mean, what are the Padres' options? Right now, if Manny's not ready to go at third base, Kim's playing third base, you would think, right? And they're going to bring in a first base bat with Crony at second, Bogarts at short, so there's no conversation there. If Manny's ready to go, Kim's probably at second, Cronenworth's at first, and Bogarts is at short, and we'll see who ends up DHing. I don't think it's too much of a question right now where Bogarts will play, because right now it's it feels like it's at shortstop. And if a day is if he needs a day off or an injury happens, then yeah, you can have Kim go go play shortstop. Um, next one is on Jake Cronenworth. Confidence? Will he rebound? Schilt says I definitely have confidence he is going to rebound. I mean, Jake's a winning player. The game can be hard, clearly. When you say he had a down year, people always go to the offensive numbers. I thought Jake had a productive year in a lot of areas. He played a really good defensive first base, which is where we're looking to have him start the season. Interesting. He does intangible things really well, which don't show up in some of the things you can evaluate from a number standpoint offensively. It was a little bit of a tale of two cities for Jake. You look at part of the season and it wasn't up to his expectations. I think he would freely admit that, but I also want to represent that before he got the wrist injury, he was in a really good place, and his numbers were actually above career average over the final month of his season. I thought he was going in a really good direction, and I think he's carried that momentum into the offseason. My confidence in Jake as an overall player is very high in what he's going to bring to our club this year in all aspects of the game. And I agree with Schilt about, like, Defense, I was fine with Jake at first base for his first year at first base. I, I was good with how he did there. And yeah, I saw some adjustments there at the end of the year. So hopefully that can carry into 2024, but I don't blame fans that are down on Jake. I'm just not going to give up on him because, I mean, maybe that's me because I'm a fan of Jake and I want him to succeed and he needs to succeed because he's, you know, this is this next year, 2024, this is his first year in his seven-year contract that he's got here. So it, it needs to it needs to work out. So maybe it's just me trying to be optimistic and look at it glass half full. But if I'm looking at it glass half full, there are things that I can point to to be like, yeah, I think Jake's going to have a bounce back season. And, and Schilt mentioned some of these there. And Schilt talking about how uh, he is looking, Padres are looking to have Jake start the year at first base. It's kind of like Bogarts at short. Like, that's what they have to do right now, right? I mean, they don't have another first baseman. It's Cronenworth at first. It's Kim at second. It's Bogarts at short. And then if Manny's ready, it's Manny at third. If Manny's not ready, maybe it's Eggy at third if they need to have Cronenworth at first because they don't pick up someone. Uh, maybe it's Profar if they pick him up and he's at first and Crony's at second. Bogarts at third. Or excuse me, at short. Kim at third. Manny DHing. I don't know. Maybe they pick up Brand. I think Brandon Belt would be a solid addition for this team. But Schilt, all he can do is talk about right now. So, yeah, the plan right now, and they can adapt, but the plan right now is for Crony to be at first base, obviously. This was <laughs> kind of funny when I was reading this. Kevin says, we have established that Fernando Tatis Jr. is a right fielder, correct? And Schilt says, yes, he does play right field. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, he does play right field, Kevin. Uh, does he play right field exclusively at the moment? Yeah. And again, that's what Schilt has to go off of. Tatis in center field would be interesting because we know he's athletic, but when he just won a platinum glove in right field, it's hard for me to sit here and say he should move off of right field. But if they don't bring in a center fielder and they bring in a couple of outfielders that are better suited for the corners, is it best for Tatis to go play center? He's played center before. And if he spends spring training playing center field like he did last year in right field, and there he goes and wins the platinum glove, I have no doubt that he'd be able to play good center field. But he did say a quote, I think, before the end of the season about how him playing right field, he, think that's, he thinks that is better at Petco Park because of the, the, the room that needs to be covered there. That was before Trent got traded, though. So maybe things have, have, have changed there. Um, but Schilt says here, he's strongly penciled in to play right field, and that's the expectation for him and for us. But things always can change, so I'm not going to close the door on anything. But at the moment, there's nothing that indicates he's not going to play anything other than right field. They could have Jose Azokar play center field. And I think Kevin was on with 
not with Darren Smith, but on the Darren Smith show with Marty Caswell the other day, talking about how, yeah, Jose Azokar, he might actually be playing some center, more center field than what we think in 2024. And that may signal that the Padres don't really plan on acquiring a, a firm starting center fielder. And the focus is going to be on acquiring a left fielder, whether that's Eddie Rosario, David Peralta, Tommy Pham, whoever else is out there. And maybe it's Azokar. If Azokar is the option in center, he's playing center and Tatis will play right. I don't think you're going to put Tatis in center and have Azokar play right. Azokar is familiar with center. That's the position, the position he plays most. You, you put him in center. You keep Tatis in right field. If it isn't broke, don't try to go fix it. Tatis in right field. I think that's where the Padres have to. Right now, they have to put him in right field. Um, question from Kevin about Jose Azokar. How viable a candidate is he to make a significant number of starts in 2024? Schilt says, it's a big spring for everybody. It's a big spring for this guy. It's a big spring for all of us every year. With Sugar, it's a great opportunity for him. He's helped us the last couple of years and competed at the big league level. And now he's going to get more opportunity. You'll see that based on at-bats. He'll get the opportunity in spring training to play center, maybe move around a couple different spots depending on how the roster shapes up. He's going to get an opportunity to take that next step and work towards earning more time. And again, it's also kind of like, well, that's that's the only choice the Padres have. You, you got to give him the at-bats. You got to give him the chance because he's the center fielder right now. Jacob Marcy, I mean, he hasn't played much in double A even. He hasn't played in triple A. Sure, you could have Jacob Marcy go start opening day on center field, but he better have a good spring training for even the Padres to make that case. And, you know, right now it's it's Cal Mitchell in left field if you go look at fan graphs and Jose Zocar in, in center field. And Profar is going to get signed with the Padres. I'd be surprised if he's not. We're just waiting for that time. Um, and he'll, he'll, he'd slot into left field. If he was signed today, he'd be in left and Azokar would be in center and Tatis would be in right. Like, you just don't really have an option. So I want to see Azokar play well. I think that only helps the competition. That only helps the Padres. Him, if he plays well and someone else is starting in center field, him being the fourth outfielder wouldn't be the worst. I mean, you probably want him to be, to be the fifth outfielder. You probably want someone better offensively to be a fourth outfielder, but it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. We know he can play all, all three outfield spots. He's good defensively. I don't know if he was just doing curls or something, but he, he does look pretty jacked uh, in some of the pictures that I've seen. I think those were from this past offseason or this offseason. So we'll see. We'll see how Zokar does in spring training. Um, and then the last question here from Kevin was about some of the double A, triple A prospects. Schilt says it's a great opportunity with the exception of Jackson Merrill. Pretty much all of this prospect group is coming into their first big league camp. Well, except Ethan Salas as well. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for a continuance of what they've done and an addition of taking advantage of the experience of not only the camp and their time with our staff, but also the opportunity to learn and grow and appreciate the guys that have been there and done that for a period of time at the highest level very well. And yeah, it's going to be interesting to see some of these prospects that are getting that call, like Robbie Snelling, like Salas, obviously, not for like big league level, but just seeing continuing his development. Jackson Merrill, is he going to make that push to try to make the opening day roster? Are they going to put Jackson Merrill in the outfield a little bit because of the infield? being jammed and not having a lot of outfield options right now. Are they going to try that? Uh, it doesn't seem like they're trying Cronenworth in the outfield, but things could change there as well. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of guys that non-roster invitee list that was put out, I think, last week. There's some intriguing names on that list. Um, so we'll see. And then there's other guys like Luis Patino, like Iriarte, um, obviously Brito Vasquez, those guys are going to make the roster. Um, not, I'm talking about Vasquez Brito seeing what they can do. And that push, same thing with Avila Waldron, that push for the rotation, that push for outfield spots. Um, someone like I'm blanking on the name right now. Uh, Terso, Terso Ornelas, someone like that. Is he going to make uh, a push? to be on that outfield roster? Is there going to be someone unexpected to make that roster that we're not necessarily thinking about right now? We'll see. It's going to be an interesting spring training for sure. Uh, before getting to the chat, that, that was just 
pretty much the updates that Mike Schild gave us Padres fans via Kevin Acey. Thank you to Kevin Acey for doing that Q&A. Um, the link to that article, just go to the San Diego Union Tribune and you will see that story right there on their site. Before getting to the chat, I want to remind you about some of the great partners of the show. Gaglion Bros, the main sponsor of the show. Best cheesesteaks and garlic fries in San Diego. You can visit their main location on Friars Road. They'll be back inside Petco Park. They're inside Snapdragon Stadium as well. They've got the cheesesteak fries, garlic fries, cheesesteaks. Check them out. Um, location, again, Friars Road. Description, um, or excuse me, the link is in the description. Breaking Tea and FOCO. FOCO's got some great Padres bobbleheads and collectibles. Breaking Tea has some great Padres shirts, sweatshirts. Same thing with San Diego Wave, San Diego State. You can check them out. Links in the description there. Underdog Fantasy, 100% deposit match. Up to $100 if you click that link in the description or use my code, Talking Friars. Same code, Talking Friars, for $20 off your SeatGeek order. Um, check them out. Use that to your advantage, or you could save it for this Padres season. If you missed it, FanFest was announced. I put a video, a video, a video, it's a video, a video up on that. Yesterday, March 24th is the date there. The Peter Seidler Celebration of Life has not been announced yet. I'm assuming that's going to be on March 23rd, the Saturday. And then so Sunday would be the uh, FanFest. There's going to be the Celebrity Softball Game, which is going to be the first one that they've had, I think. It's something that... It, they usually don't do because usually fans are in the outfield grass playing catch, doing some things there because it's usually fan fest in January, but because it's going to be in March when the season has already started for the Padres, there's going to be the celebrity game there, alumni game. And then the players are going to take batting practice. There's going to be the player executive. I think Q and a at Gallagher square, like usual autographs. Don't have your hopes up there with autographs and pictures like just, have your expectations low and if you get one of the, the big guys great if you don't well you weren't expecting much because there's going to be long lines there's going to be a lot of people there the tickets are free up to four um and you can claim them the season tickets i believe season ticket members can claim them on the 15th i think 15th and then general public on the 16th i think it's via the ballpark app or i'm sure emails will go out you can go to the padres website but yeah, those were some of the details that came out yesterday on FanFest. We weren't sure if they were going to have one, if it was just going to be the celebration of life. That's what I kind of thought was going to happen, was it was just going to be this, the focus on Peter Seidler when the team got back. They weren't going to make a whole weekend out of it. It was just going to be Seidler, celebration of life, the two exhibition games which are happening. I believe it's against the Mariners. And then there's going to be the day off, I want to say Wednesday, and then Thursday, the home opener against the San Francisco Giants. We'll see who Bob Melvin has on his squad there when all things are said and done in this offseason. I saw this morning they traded Ross Stripling to the A's, so they're trying to save some money there, maybe add a big starting pitcher. Maybe that's Blake Snell. We shall see. Matt Chapman, I'm sure, that Bob Melvin is advocating for there. So the NOS could be getting even tougher uh, by the end of this offseason. All right, let's get to the chat here. Adrian says Xander needs to play first. I mean, if you're looking at the best defensive alignment, and if you think that Xander can play first base just at the same as Cronenworth can play first base, the best defensive alignment probably would be Manny at third, Kim at short, because Kim's probably the better shortstop than Xander. Cronenworth is the better. He's better at second base than at first. And can Xander do the same job that Jake did at first base? I don't know. Xander doesn't play first base. But Cronenworth didn't really play first base. He played some, but he didn't play every day. So I don't think the Padres are, you know, really doing that. Maybe Xander takes some reps there. I That video would definitely be circulating around social media at spring training. That would be the headline if Xander took any ground balls at first base, or if he took any throws at first base. Right now, I think they're just going to keep Xander at short. I don't know if they want to go Xander at first for a year and then Kim leaves and they have Xander go play short again. Who knows about Jackson Merrill? Is Jackson Merrill going to be outfield, the utility? I want him playing every day when he comes up, though. So Xander's going. I feel like Xander's going to play first base at some point here. He's not going to be at shortstop his entire Padres contract. I think we can agree on that. But moving him second year of the contract, one, we know he doesn't want to do that. Like, he's already said that to the media. 
I disagreed with his opinion though. Like, dude, you've already got your money. Do what's best for the team. I I I would get it more if you didn't have your contract yet. And oh, shortstops, they're gonna get the bigger he can get the long term contract where first base, I'm not gonna be able to get that much money. Okay, but you've already got your money, dude. Like, do what's best for the team. He probably thinks that what's best for the team is me playing shortstop, you know? And I understand that these guys, they have big egos. Like you kind of have to with baseball because of how much you do fail. Um, we know that saying, right? The 30%, 70%. So I get it. He doesn't want to move, but I would do what's best for the team. But that's easy for me to say when I'm just sitting here talking about the team and I'm not a player on the team that has played short my whole career. Um, and I think I'm really good at shortstop, and I believe in myself, and Kim might leave after one year, you know? But his explanation about, oh, well, first base, it's closer to the bench. Dude, you think they're going to bench you in year two of your long contract? I disagreed with that. Like, that point made no sense to me. Look at Bryce Harper. He goes and plays first base. He's first base long-term now with the Phillies. Does he think that he's, oh, he's closer to the bench, so I'm going to get benched? No. He's doing what is best for the team. He already has his money. And it seems like it's working out pretty good for the Phillies. I'm not saying that that, that means that it's going to be a guarantee to work out for the Padres, but I would just do what the team thinks is best, especially when I already have my money. What's up, Ben? Good name. Ben Ruiz says, I read yesterday that Blue Jays won't be trading Manoa. They see him in the rotation. Well, Maybe they want him to compete for a rotation spot and don't know about the, what's his name, Rodriguez? I'm blanking on the, the, the name they just acquired. Um, they gave him a free agent contract. The Blue Jays did. And the Padres, I think, expressed some interest in him. He was pitching in the WBC. Maybe they want to keep Manoa because they don't know if that guy can actually be in the rotation. But they've got some options there, for sure. Flygod97 says trade for Santander. That's an option as well. That name gets thrown around every once in a while. There's Kepler. There's Santander. I think there's Seth Brown with the A's. Um, yeah, there's those are some names that, that get thrown around for sure. Cedric Mullins is a name that gets thrown out there. But the Orioles, they are trying to win, obviously, with the, the trade for Corbin Burns. So I don't know. I don't know if they want to deal any of those outfielders because injuries can happen. And Santander is a good guy. That's a good player. And Cedric Mullins is a good player. And their rotation looks decent. They could add another arm, and but they have money to spend in free agency. So maybe they don't want to trade someone, trade one of their, um, you know, major league guys. They want to they they want to go for it, and they should go for it. You know, especially with this window where you got these guys that aren't under these big, long contracts, which they are going to be under, I feel like, with the new ownership group for the Orioles coming in. And I'm happy for Orioles fans because, man, that ownership group was not helping. That owner that owner was one of the worst owners in baseball. And I guess, you know, technically it's not official yet, but he, he is one of the worst owners in baseball. Uh, John Fisher saves him from being, like, the worst owner. And John Henry right now with the Red Sox. Red Sox fans are pissed. And I would be pissed if I was a Red Sox fan as well. No doubt about that. I mean, they're spending money on Liverpool and PGA Tour and the Penguins. I think the Penguins. Maybe that's another group that I'm thinking about. But And you're a big market team. You see other teams spending. It's been years since you have spent a lot of money. You're the freaking Red Sox, and you're not spending. They didn't even want to bring back Justin Turner, who wanted to be back with the Red Sox. So, yeah, I'd be pissed about that. Uh, back to the Padres here. Tim says Xander to first, Crone to second. Yeah, I, I, that could be the best defensive alignment, but I don't. It does take, I guess, two sides to. The Padres could say Xander, you're playing first base, but I guess that's easier said than done, right? Uh, let's see. Xander's going, like I said, Xander's going to be off of shortstop at some point. Maybe the Padres are like, eh, it wouldn't be the best look if, if we move Xander off of shortstop when we just signed him to a long contract. But should the Padres be caring about the look or should they be caring about 
what's the best thing for the team. They should be caring about what's best for the team. I don't think it's going to happen, but we'll see. Um, let's see here. Continuing to go through the chat. Uh, ben asks, who would you sign, Ben, for a one-year deal with an option, Carlos Santana or Brandon Belt or both? Well, they're not going to sign both. It would be one or the other, I would think. Um, gut, I would say Carlos Santana. I, but I'm not 100% sure about Carlos Santana's age. Because I know Brandon Belt's getting up there. Santana's 37. Brandon Belt's coming off the better year, I think. But I view Santana more of the, as the power bat. But Belt obviously has a ton of experience at first base, left-handed bat. Um, Santana switch hitter. Santana had a 103 OPS plus last year, 23 home runs. Brandon Belt had 19 home runs, 136 OPS plus. Santana had the higher B war. Uh, he had way more at bats though, 550 at bats. Brandon Belt had 339. So. I'd probably go with Santana. I'm, I am a little worried about the Brandon Belt injuries that would pop up, but the Padres would probably go with who is the cheaper option, <laughs> just based on where we're at right now. I don't know if they have a, a, a strong opinion on who they would rather have, one or the other. I'm sure there's split opinions there, but maybe only one guy's opinion is what matters the most there, and we all know who that guy is, AJ. Yariel Rodriguez. Thank you, Kirsten. Thank you. Yeah, Joey Votto, that's a name that gets thrown around as well. He would not cost really anything. It doesn't seem like there's much interest. If you go look at Joey Votto's um, Twitter or X, he doesn't seem like he's getting much interest. So, hey, Joey Votto as a Padre, that would be entertaining for sure. But how much money are you spending on Joey Votto? That is that money better spent on Carlos Santana or Brandon Belt or on a left fielder, center fielder, a guy that's not what 40? How old is Joey Votto? But how much is Votto will is Votto willing to take Nelson Cruz one year, one mil? If that's the case, maybe. I mean, because the dude's super smart. He knows hitting. I know he had a 99 OPS plus this past year, a negative 0.1 baseball reference war, hit 202, like. What value does he really give to the Padres on the field? Uh, but he, so yeah, he's forty. But I mean, having that guy in the clubhouse, I don't think that's a bad thing. But with the budget, I mean, every penny counts, I guess, right? If what if he's willing to take the the league minimum deal, and that's the only contender that offers him that? Would he take it to be on the Padres and be have a chance to make the postseason and maybe go on a run? Or would he rather take the option of signing with the Royals or Pirates or Rockies, who's not contending, and maybe there's an agreement beforehand, hey, you'll trade me at the deadline to a, a team that's in contention. Maybe that's what happens with Joey Votto, but that's a name. I like Joey Votto, uh, but I just I, I wonder... Is it worth it to bring Joey Votto in? He's not going to cost a lot of money, but every penny counts when you're under a budget, right? All right, that's going to do it. Talking Friars, episode 561. Thank you, everyone, for the time. Just wanted to go over that Kevin AC article, Mike Schilt Q&A. Gave a little bit of updates, some updates there on some key guys on the roster. If you're on YouTube watching this on replay, please give your comments in the chat. Subscribe, turn on the notifications so you don't miss when I go live next. You don't miss when the videos go out, the episodes, the interviews go out. Uh, podcast platform listeners, I appreciate you. Thank you so much, everyone, for taking some time. You don't have to. You choose to. I appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day and go pods.